like to welcome our next guest, uh, Dr. Manjusha Shelk. Please join me. Hello. Thanks for being here. Um, so Manjusha Shelk, you are you founded a startup um, in a field that will be crucial in the years to come. Uh, you co-founded um, Recharging Energy, a startup that is currently developing an alternative to lithium batteries um, using sodium, uh, which could be a cheaper and sustainable alternative um, for battery production. Could you remind us, first of all, why, of course, we need lithium batteries, but they're not perfect. Why they're not perfect? Yeah, thank you so much, Valerie, and thanks to IEA for having me here. It's Manjusha Shelke, <laughs> not Shelk. <Okay. laughs> My apologies. Yeah, well, uh, so as you mentioned that I have founded Recharge in Energy. Basically, I am an academician. I am a scientist in one of the national labs in India. And based on the research that has been carried out in my lab, we have incorporated this company to take this research from lab to market. Well, so I'll tell you what are the problems with lithium battery. As you said, that we need lithium ion batteries definitely. And the invention and commercialization of lithium ion batteries have uh, one of the greatest impact on technological development that has happened in human history because all our uh, uh, portable co uh, organic electronics devices, cell phones and laptops. Everything is charged by lithium ion batteries. And now what they call as e-mobility revolution where electric vehicles are being pushed worldwide. So the demand for this lithium ion batteries is going to grow exponentially. Uh, so that is where the problems also become prominent uh, because lithium ion batteries are uh, prone to uh, heat up. I mean, they, they are prone to thermal runaway. In our scientific language, we call it thermal runaway. So that chemistry inherently is prone to thermal runaway. And in extreme conditions, they can catch fire as well. And battery can explode. We see a uh, lot of incidences where electric vehicles are catching fire, right? So uh, safety is paramount for such kind of advanced applications. So that is one of the drawback of lithium ion battery. Uh, second is cost. So over the years, the cost of lithium ion battery has decreased significantly. But still, uh, if we see the representation of the cost in the devices of, like, for example, electric vehicles, the cost of battery is the highest one. So we still further need cost reduction. And we have to develop sustainable energy storage solutions if we have larger adoptions of uh, electric vehicles throughout the world, right? So that is another issue with lithium ion battery. And third is that extraction and processing of raw materials like lithium or cobalt, which are necessary materials for fabricating lithium ion batteries. Uh, there is a, a lot of environmental impact in these processes as compared to, uh, I would say, like uh, extraction of lithium. If I give an example, around 2.2 million liters of water is required to process one ton of lithium. So there is a lot of environmental impact around lithium. Besides, uh, we know that cobalt, which is found generally, or which is mined generally in Democratic Republic of Congo, and there are reports of uh, uh, very poor labor standards and uh, conditions under which those materials are mined and there is environmental impact in DRC because of these cobalt mines as well. So these are certain issues with lithium ion batteries and that's why we need more sustainable and safer alternatives to them. Um, is there also an issue of um, limited resources um, and the fact that we are entering an era in which we will need um, an exponential amount of, of lithium batteries. And as you were saying, that involves mining critical minerals, rare earths. Um, and so there's also this kind of more strategic geopolitical element of there's a race to um, you know, have access to that lithium, but not everyone can have access to that lithium or the other rare uh, minerals, uh, critical minerals. Um, yeah, that's true, uh, because lithium is concentrated. Most of the lithium deposits are concentrated in South American countries like Chile and um, uh, Argentina and Bolivia and some of the lithium deposits are uh, found in China and Australia as well and most of these mines even if 
South American countries have larger lithium deposits. These mines are controlled by China. So, of course, there are geopolitical issues for access to this lithium. And as I said, cobalt is also found mostly in Congo. And even those mines are also uh, substantially controlled by China. So, there is a kind of energy insecurity in some parts of the world because of the geopolitical issues. So, we definitely need raw materials uh, where all the countries can have access to. So, sodium is uh, kind of... Where, where does sodium come in, in, into play here? <laughs> so yeah, that is where sodium come into play because it's most abundant material and it, it is uh, proportionately distributed throughout the globe. So, that's why uh, it has an edge over so lithium ion batteries. So you um, have found a way to manufacture batteries with sodium, um, so replacing lithium with sodium, correct? Um, so sodium, is it salt? Is it just like sea salt or where does it come from? Uh, it's, it's not exactly sea salt, but the raw material that is required to make the electron material, sodium containing electron material, is a sea salt. So generally sodium metal is produced by electrolytic reduction of sea salt, sodium chloride. Uh, which is not as environmentally uh, disastrous as like lithium extraction and sodium chloride is abundantly available in our oceans, right? So that is where sodium metal is, uh, uh, I would not extract it, but synthesize by electrolytic reduction of s our table salt. Uh, but it needs to be in certain forms where it can store the energy. So electrode materials based on sodium, those are then further synthesized from that sodium metal. So essentially, this does not require, so no extractive industries? Uh, this is something that's created in a lab? Yes, it can be created in the lab. Um, what are the, the benefits? I mean, as, aside from what we've mentioned so far, no extractive industries, um, you know, the, the geopolitical energy insecurity related to lithium, um, human rights, why would a sodium ion battery be better or at least an interesting alternative to lithium batteries? It's, it's uh, interesting because it can be uh, fabricated in the similar uh, uh, manufacturing uh, plants where lithium ion batteries. So the scalability or adoption can be very easy. Uh, scaling is very easy because already there is an industry. There are instruments uh, where lithium ion batteries are being manufactured. So same facility can be used for sodium ion battery manufacturing as well. But the most important uh, thing with sodium ion battery is safety. This chemistry is inherently safer than lithium ion battery. It is not prone to thermal runaway as easy as lithium ion battery and it does not catch fire. And besides, they can be charged and discharged at very faster rates. Like we can uh, charge sodium ion battery in 15 minutes, which is not possible with lithium ion battery. Uh, we can discharge them completely up to zero volt. You must have heard that we are not supposed to uh, put our lithium batteries or battery banks in our checked in luggage when we uh, travel via air, right? It is because uh, there are certain issues. Uh, we cannot uh, keep charged battery and we cannot discharge lithium ion battery completely because it can catch fire. Uh, but with sodium ion battery, that problem is not there. We can discharge it completely and we can carry it in our, uh, I mean, anywhere. Transportation is possible. So you can recharge a sodium battery a lot faster than a lithium battery? Yeah. Um, I mean, that could certainly be a game changer um, and when it comes to electric vehicles. Yeah, it can be, definitely. It can be a game changer. If, I mean, if we see all these benefits to sodium batteries, how come, you know, we're not seeing them in, in, all, in all the EVs around the world if, if, you know, if they have all these benefits? Yeah, there are all the benefits, but, you know, uh, when a lithium-ion battery has been commercialized in 1991 and in over the 30-plus uh, years, uh, its cost has reduced tenfold and its energy density has increased threefold. So sodium ion battery is still at early stage of commercialization. Uh, it has a potential to reduce the cost because the raw materials that are used are cheaper. Uh, if I give an example that lithium carbonate, the cost of lithium carbonate is around 37,000 US dollar per metric ton and that has reduced substantially since 2022. Before that it was more than 80,000 US dollar per metric ton. Uh, for sodium carbonate, which is a raw material for sodium ion batteries, it's the cost is around 290 uh, US dollar per metric ton. But uh, cost is one aspect. Uh, 
uh, of, of uh, financial viability of sodium ion batteries. You need to have uh, uh, s proper supply chain and uh, uh, supply chain with uh, considering this cost, uh, I mean, proper, I think I would say competitive prices are required. So that kind of supply chain has not been built yet for sodium ion battery because I, as I said, it is at the early stage of commercialization. Plus uh, the energy density or the performance that is required for the advanced applications like electric vehicles. It is not yet optimized to uh, be competitive with lithium ion batteries. It is comparable with, so in lithium ion batteries also there are different kind of uh, electrode materials and based on that the applications of lithium ion battery are different. So LFP lithium iron phosphate based batteries which are considered as safer among lithium batteries itself. So the performance of sodium ion battery is comparable with LFP but it is still not of the standard of some of the lithium ion batteries when it comes to energy density. So that is one of the challenge then supply chain is another challenge and um, as I say that there are certain regulatory uh, requirements also. So uh, I would say that a lot of uh, work is still needed uh, to bring sodium ion batteries as a competitor to lithium ion battery. But I think it would catch up eventually. Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, so lithium batteries, they have uh, the range is uh, bigger. And so you could potentially, I mean, if you have a car with a lithium battery, you could drive for, I don't know, several hours, several hundred kilometers. And sodium batteries, on the other hand, are great if you want to recharge them very quickly, but then you can only use them for like a shorter amount of time. Is that is that that distinction? Is it correct that we could use maybe sodium for um, you know e-mobility for like maybe electric scooters or delivering things in the city where you can actually recharge them, you know, several times uh, during the day? It's not exactly correct. It's not wrong either. Uh, uh, when r it comes to range, it depends on the battery pack, the um, what we say, the energy density of the battery pack, you know. So if there are 100 lithium ion cells giving you certain energy density for that battery pack, that has given a range to that electric vehicle. Maybe we need a little more sodium ion batteries, but we can have the battery pack with similar energy density, which can give similar range. Besides, in sodium ion battery, uh, the uh, internal materials that are used to fabricate the battery. So one thing is that uh, it is uh, the electron materials or sodium ion chem chemistry is compatible with aluminum, whereas in lithium ion batteries, you need to use copper. So that has reduced because aluminum is lighter than copper. So it reduces the weight of sodium ion battery, even though the energy density is slightly lesser than lithium batteries, the weight can be reduced. But as I say, as you say that probably uh, the sodium ion battery based battery packs will be slightly heavier than lithium ion battery. Uh, but I don't see uh, that as a challenge for eventual adoption of sodium ion batteries in electric vehicles. Because initially when lithium ion batteries were commercialized, their energy densities were also very, very less. So when it comes a, a play between safety and faster charging and energy density, I would say that eventually sodium ion batteries will be adopted, at least in certain applications like two-wheelers and three-wheelers, probably. Um, you are from India. Um, and how do sodium batteries address India's need to expand um, efforts with renewable energy storage um, and capacity? How can this be a solution as well applied to other countries globally? Uh, well, uh, India is already prioritizing the local manufacturing industry through the initiatives like Make in India campaign uh, that our government is running. Uh, it is promoting uh, local manufacturing of most of that and uh, creating a kind of self-reliant energy future for India. So in that sense, uh, sodium ion battery offer an opportunity to create uh, energy storage system based on locally available resources and local expertise also. There are a lot of people who are trying to co uh, scale up the sodium ion battery technology and most of the materials required for sodium ion battery technology are available within India. So I believe that uh, this is an advantage for India's uh, renewable energy needs. Also, India is running 
larger program uh, for solar and wind energy. So this renewable energy is intermittent even though India is blessed with a lot of uh, sunlight throughout the year. Uh, this uh, renewable energy cannot be directly integrated with our current existing uh, grid or uh, energy storage systems because it is intermittent. So you need to store, you need to have reliable energy storage uh, uh, systems which can store this energy during peak uh, generation and then uh, it can be a reliable power can be supplied when the uh, renewable energy is not available. So, yeah. Has the energy already been stored in, in sodium? Batteries? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. So it's, it's I mean, <laughs> it, is there a specific project or, um, I mean, in India that you, you could share an example? Uh, it is not commercialized or deployed yet in India, uh, but uh, there are uh, companies like uh, Recharge and Energy, which is my startup, and then recently uh, Reliance Energy, which is one of the biggest corporate in India. They have acquired one sodium ion battery uh, company from UK. So there is a lot of uh, um, push for this kind of alternate energy or new energy technologies in India, but deployment has not happened yet. Yeah. Um, given the, the strategic importance of, of lithium batteries, um, you know, we've seen obviously tremendous interest um, over the last few years. Do you think that because of that, advanced economies have already won that race um, and, and you know, secure the technology, the access to, to the minerals? Um, and if they have won that race, can sodium ion batteries be an alternative for emerging economies? A sodium ion battery is not an uh, is an alternative not only for emerging economies. If I see like I had traveled. Uh, to US last year I was there uh, one year on my Fulbright fellowship and I did meet a lot of uh, people from the battery innovation ecosystem in New York and around and I see that it's not only India or it's not only the emerging economies even the developed countries like US has a problem of supply chain for lithium ion batteries or uh, lithium ion battery manufacturing component manufacturing everything is concentrated in very few countries even United States also doesn't have complete control over that uh, battery uh, ecosystem, lithium battery ecosystem. So they are very much interested in such kind of technology based on sodium ion, uh, which can be easily scaled up. Of course, there are technological challenges and one has to work over those technological challenges and uh, we have to leverage regulatory support and the uh, market dynamics and then uh, we can uh, scale up those technology which can be applied globally for even for developing uh, economy, even for uh, developed economies, I would say. Yeah. Can India be, uh, you know, the next powerhouse in terms of sodium ion batteries? Um, do you see that happening in the future? I definitely see that happening in the future. The way uh, the development is going on in India, uh, the kind of push Indian government is uh, providing for alternate energy storage solutions to become a self-reliant and to have a secure energy future for India. Also, Indian government is prioritizing uh, sustainable goals and uh, uh, their environmental objectives. So it, is, it does align with the India's uh, ambitions for clean energy transition while their uh, commitment towards uh, environmental objectives as well. So sodium ion battery fits very well in those objectives and in those goals of India for moving towards clean energy transition. Um, you are a scientist, um, and but you're also, you know, the founder of a startup. How did you put yourself in the shoes of a of a business owner? Uh, you know, having a scientific background and perhaps not being in the business world. Um, how did you make maybe the transition, or how did you, yeah, put, you know? Yeah, uh, it was uh, entirely different uh, to be an entrepreneur than to be an academician because as an academician, uh, you don't really worry about the uh, real life applications of the research that you are doing. You are driven by uh, finding out something or creating a knowledge uh, not necessarily having an application of that knowledge, but developing a science. But when I have uh, decided to, uh, I mean, when I have decided to venture into entrepreneurship, 
I have to uh, relearn a lot of things, unlearn a lot of things and relearn a lot of things, unlearn to talk a lot of things in scientific or technical language and then uh, filter out those uh, technical jargon and explain the things to the people who are not from scientific background uh, in a more compelling uh, or in a more convincing way. As, as to uh, for that I have to uh, I mean even I have taken classes even at this at this uh, stage of my career to how to make pitch presentations without being too much scientific or too much uh, technically <laughs> you know mm, uh, so it was it required a lot of mindset change and I have to adopt a kind of business language which I don't think I have learned completely even today but I'm learning it yeah, it was a lot of learning. <laughs> How did you go about convincing um, funders who don't necessarily have a scientific background? Yeah, uh, so um, basically initially most of the fundraising that we have done was from government agencies. Uh, so it was easy because there was expert panel. So um, it was easy to explain then the requirement of developing such kind of technology which can uh, really uh, would be helpful for India's uh, resilient energy future. But our uh, first fundraising that we have done with uh, Social Alpha, uh, Susmita is here. Uh, I would not say that they are completely technologically um, unaware. Uh, they very much uh, knew about climate-based technologies. They understand uh, the technical things behind these uh, kind of climate innovative technologies. So. Uh, it was quite easier to convince them, but of course uh, uh, I have uh, developed a kind of compelling narrative and storytelling to emphasize the practical uh, usage of the research that I have done in my lab and uh, I have built a proper value proposition to convince them. Uh, but it, so far it was easy because it is still at early stage, uh, ideation stage or proof of concept stage I would say. I don't know how it would be in future. <laughs> Um, um, as journalists, I've done several stories on, you know, lithium batteries, and um, I've never interviewed a, a woman who's actually working in that field. I don't know if it's because it's mostly men who are in the positions to actually present, you know, the projects or so on. But um, what's your take on that? Um, is it because maybe women are less likely to, you know, become entrepreneurs or take that risk? Um, you know, what's your take on that? It's not that women are less likely to be entrepreneurs. Um, since when I have uh, donned the shoes of entrepreneurships, I see a lot of female uh, founders around me. In fact, I see more female founders than more female than female scientists that I used to see around me. So it's not that there are not women entrepreneurs, but um, energy storage or renewable energy is kind of uh, such a deep tech uh, innovation. Uh, it, it requires decades of R&D behind that. And I think that is where uh, these years of commitment towards research and development, that is where uh, are very less women are there in this particular area of research uh, because it requires a lot of resilience and um, uh, years of research and development. And you also need to have proper uh, work-life balance so a lot of women tend to even though initially they I mean I do have a lot of female students who are doing PhD in energy storage or in renewable energy but they drop off they drop off at certain stage because it is quite demanding it is uh, time demanding it requires uh, uh, prioritizing your uh, caregiving and family responsibilities as well as your research and development responsibilities. So probably that is one of the reasons that why there are not many women, women entrepreneurs in energy sector particularly. Uh, but I see that it is changing. It is changing a lot in India at least. Um, the same final question um, as our previous guests, if you had a magic wand um, and could change anything about the world um, for a more sustainable planet, what would you do? <laughs> yeah. Um, if I have a magic wand to have a more sustainable planet, probably I would try to instill a sense of uh, environmental responsibility uh, among the people. Uh, we see that, I don't know, uh, as a scientist, I don't really believe in magic, uh, but, <laughs> but I would uh, say that maybe uh, a more connection towards our Mother Earth uh, and uh, uh, 
for that a lot of mindset uh, change or cultural shift would be required uh, so i would try to instill that uh, uh, among the human population if i could really do a magic <laughs> yeah the overwhelming response has been there's no magic uh, but thanks for that um thank you again um, for being here today. Um, Thank you so much for sharing your, your insights. Thank you so much. Thanks.